everyone, this is Payana and welcome to my video. This video is going to be about Winter Song by S.J. Jones. So, when I found out that someone had written a book retelling the story of Labyrinth, I was thrilled because I'm a massive Labyrinth fan. I, I, I loved it when I was a kid. I showed it to my kid. She loved it. I still love it now because, you know, Jim Henson's, I've been just so mad about Jim Henson movies since I was a kid. And I love David Bowie. What can I say? <laughs> um, and David Bowie is the Goblin King. Wow. So I was really excited about this book. When I Was I really excited about ordering it? Yes. Did I want to like it? Oh my God, yes. Did I like it? Okay. Oh, I'd already seen other people giving their opinion on this and talking about it and reading their reviews and watching their videos, but I kind of hoped secretly that I would be the one to make a good review about this. I really thought that nobody could make something wrong out of Labyrinth because it's such a it's such a good story with such good characters. That surely you can't like go wrong with that kind of thing like this is a, a Beauty and the Beast retelling so this is entirely told from the point of view of a 19 year old girl called Liesel this is set in Germany in what I think is either the late 18th or the early 19th century and it starts off with so you've got Liesel and her younger sister, Ketha? Kathy? I don't even know how you say her name, but Kathy, let's call her Kathy, her little sister, who's 16, and her little brother, Joseph, who's about 12 or 13, I think. And it starts off with them going to prepare for their little brother Joseph's um, audition he ha he's a violin player he's a brilliant violin player he has an audition with a master uh, musician who's going to uh, take him on as an apprentice and coach him into being an international star okay and in this family uh the everything kind of revolves around music their father is a violin player their mother's a singer liesel uh plays the violin and sings she also likes to compose and Kathy's kind of the odd one out here. She is not musically literate at all. She kind of comes across as being completely tone deaf. No interest in music there. And I kind of felt sorry for her right from the start because she is absolutely the odd one out in this family. And Liesel is incredibly jealous of her at the beginning of the book. And I can't, I don't really understand why. Like she's jealous of of her because she's very very beautiful and Liesel all the way through this bloody book is always going on about how ugly she is which is so annoying like we get it girl you don't think you're beautiful you think you're ugly your younger sister's way more beautiful than you and that makes you jealous we get it but here's the thing there's actually a picture of her at the beginning of the book I don't think she's ugly. Like, I don't know what you think, but I mean, obviously, I don't think anyone's ugly. But going by the definition of like what beauty is in the media, she's got quite kind of large eyes, expressive face. She's got a nice nose, nice round nose there, quite full lips. I don't know. I mean, obviously you can be the most beautiful woman in the world and still think you're ugly. But the fact that she just bangs on about it so much, ugh. The other thing she's jealous about her younger sister is she, she claims that her younger sister tries to take everything from her, which isn't, isn't true at all. And she has this raging argument with her at the beginning of the book um, because I think she read her diary or went to look in her kind of personal things and she knows that Liesel wants to be a great famous composer and Liesel gets really angry with her and says, oh, how dare you say that? 
wh wh why? why? Why are you angry with her? She's your younger sister. Why are you shocked that she knows you want to be a great composer? She has known you all her life. And that's another thing that kind of bugged me about this book, is how little Liesel seems to know about her siblings. But we'll get back to that. So a hundred pages later, nothing much has happened yet. We finally get to Joseph's audition, which we've been waiting for right from the beginning. And Liesel does a bit of coaching with Joseph because he is nervous, understandably. Because the audition isn't just for his future mentor, he is performing in front of the whole town as well. Uh, Liesel's family own a tavern, and so everyone's come to see this 13-year-old kid trying to do his best. And yeah, so the, the thing that comes out of this is that everyone kind of focuses on Joseph in the family because he's this amazing virtuoso, and Liesel's kind of there being like, oh yeah, I just shade into the back, I just fade into the background because I'm not beautiful and I'm not amazingly talented. So everyone looks at Kathy because she's amazingly beautiful and everyone looks at Joseph because he's amazingly talented and no one cares about me. And oh, she makes a big thing also about trying to like be there for her brother and her sister only it comes across as her trying to draw like trying to be a part of what's going on like that's how it felt to me it didn't really feel like her genuinely caring about her sister at any point uh it just came across as her trying to trying to be a part of this world that she's sort of forgotten about in because she's ugly uh, uh yeah so i didn't like liesel basically i did not like this character at all she comes across as just pathetic basically and in all of this you've got the kind of got the goblin king and it kind of weirded me out that he's actually called the goblin king in this book because I thought you could have at least kind of given him a different name. If you're supposed to do the, the retelling, this retelling of Labyrinth, did it have to be that obvious? Like, he's called the Goblin King and he is pretty much the same as the one in the movie, right down to his eyes being different colours, because David Bowie. Um, so I thought that was odd. And... He makes some kind of random appearances at the beginning, like Liesel and Kathy go to the market because they need, uh, I think they need a bow for uh, Joseph's violin. And he's kind of there and Liesel's like, oh, wow, who's this what, like tall, dark stranger in the hood? And uh, and he gives this fruit to Kathy, which she eats and it gets a bit weird and then they go back to the tavern and when Joseph's having his um, audition the Goblin King's there in the audience and um, then he abducts Kathy for some reason uh, which I don't really understand because then Liesel the aim of this is to get Liesel to come to the, the, like, the Goblin world which is called the Underground and get her back which kind of is what happens in the film, because you've got Sarah and uh, the Goblin King abducts Sarah's little brother and takes him to, to the Goblin world. Only Sarah asks, in the, in the film, Sarah asks the Goblin King to do that. Uh, she recites this incantation uh, because she's annoyed with her little brother who's just a baby and he's crying and she doesn't want to look after him. She's supposed to babysit him and she uh she, she she does she wants to play her games she doesn't want to look after her little brother so she recites this incantation uh because she knows all about the goblin king and the goblin incantations because she has it in all her books she's obsessed with this character she doesn't think it's real only she recites the incantation the goblin king appears takes her little brother and he's like well, you asked me to do that uh and then she, she has to go to the goblin world and go through the labyrinth to get her little brother back the the point of this isn't to kind of attract her into the, the goblin world. She's the one who accidentally set all this story in motion. So I don't understand, like, what is the logic of the Goblin King uh, abducting Kathy in order to get to Liesel, uh, especially with what happens next. Uh, so that's I didn't I didn't understand it, even when I got to the end of the book. Um, 
so anyway, uh, the Goblin King abducts Kathy, and then he cre- he kind of says that he's going to have this game with Liesel, that she's got to go to the underworld and go through, like, jump through hoops and play his uh, game in order to get Kathy back. And then she goes home and realises that her whole family have forgotten about Kathy. It's like uh, the Goblin King erased her entire existence from her family's collective minds, and Liesel's the only one who remembers her. And you would think that this would kind of panic her. You would think that she would be a bit distressed by this and try and find the solution immediately to get to the underworld to go and rescue her sister. Only she doesn't. She becomes complacent in this world where her sister no longer exists. Because suddenly her sister's fiancé is her fiancé and she's been in love with him since she was a kid, so she's really happy about that. And suddenly everybody's focusing on her and not focusing on her sister. So she turns into this selfish bitch who is wallowing in all this, oh wow, Kathy's out of the picture now. And this goes on for like ever. It's a really long time, like weeks go by and she she's on a schedule, this girl. Like she's got until the next full moon to save, to rescue her sister. So, but no, she just sits around being like, oh yeah, I can compose my music now and do this and do that. I don't understand why she couldn't compose her music before. Uh, and then later on it turns out that she did every way, anyway and Joseph gave her a hand with that. It's weird. So um, about 400 pages later, she gets finally decides to go to the underground and has to sacrifice her music or her compositions in order to do that. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, she gets to the goblin world and the first thing she does there is not jump straight into the ring and rescue her sister no the goblin king hosts a ball where he appears with kathy uh, his arm like she's his new wife and all the goblins are there having a ball and liesel gets drunk she doesn't try anything she picks up a violin, goes and plays with the band, because they're not playing well enough, and then she gets drunk. Um, what am I missing? I don't know. Responsible sister here. Hello? So then uh, the next morning she wakes up very hungover, completely naked, in a bed, with two goblin lady attendants. Um... And then oh, it just gets weird. Like she asks them if she can go and see the Goblin King and they say, okay. And he's like, they send him, they send her straight to his bedroom where he is lying asleep in bed. And then he wakes up and falls out of bed and covers flying everywhere. And it's all really embarrassing. And I was just like, why? Why do we have this scene? Uh, I don't want to see the Goblin King in an embarrassing position like in the movie he is a very strong um very you know confident character at no point does he kind of show any weakness and the, the, the you know one one of the kind of first serious scenes we have with him he's just flung into this weird situation he is he is the king of an entire realm and later on, it turns out he has way more powers than that. It's actually uh, his powers that makes the seasons turn over and spring come. Why are you reducing him to this? I was also a bit bewildered as to like how many interactions Liesel has with the Goblin King. Like He is always there. Um, but later on, she manages to have uh, an interaction with her sister, where it turns out her sister's mind has also been... Uh, modified um and then liesel finds out that her sister's goal in life was to find a rich husband in order to like give give her family like pay for her family's needs so in her new like fabricated world liesel's a world famous composer joseph's a world famous musician uh, her father's a tour manager or something and her mother does something wonderful as well and they don't have to look after their grotty little tavern anymore and this was like Kathy's aim in life and 
you know, like, again, I just, I just thought Kathy was a way better character than Liesl, because Liesl is just dull and selfish, and, you know, she, she doesn't, she, she tries to pretend that she cares about her family, but it doesn't really come across that way, and, uh, well, all the time, I was like, just why, why, why are you doing, why her, why this character, why is she the main character, why isn't Kathy the, the main character, because she is way better and especially in this scene where you find out that she has this huge great plan for her whole family and she wants like her idea of looking after her family is way better than Liesl's idea I want, why isn't Kathy the main character why so after another million years uh Liesl finally grabs Kathy and decides to drag her out of the underground and then again something weird happens while she is dragging her away through all the tunnels, she gets sidetracked by the Goblin King because she gets to see him uh, playing the violin. And, oh, wow, he's also a musician and he's a wonderful musician because everything's about music in this. We'll get, get back to that. It gets very weird. But she just kind of stops everything and just goes and watches him play and, like, it's supposed to be this really moving moment but once again, just completely forgetting that her that the Goblin King is using her sister's life force in order to make spring come, because that's how he does it, apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, on one hand, her sister is dying, literally, and she is the only one who can save her, but the Goblin King's playing the violin, and that's way more important, right? And I... I mean, again, in the movie, I know I'm, like, comparing this to the movie, but this is supposed to be a labyrinth retelling. At the end of the movie, Sarah is, uh, like, presented with this dilemma that the Goblin King is there telling her that she can choose to stay with him. And he makes this wonderful speech about how he will be her slave and he will completely commit himself to her if she stays with him. But despite that, she takes no notice of what he is saying and throws the incantation in his face in order to get home and save her little brother because that's what it's all about. The point of that is that she loves this character. She adores this character. She has a, 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 a figure of him on her bedside table and now she knows that he's real and now she knows that she could stay there and be the Goblin Queen and spend her life with her and it's a fabulous scene because the Goblin King is not... He is the Goblin King. He is the king of this realm but he's also lonely and he he knows now that this this girl who's come and provided him with some kind of entertainment is now going to leave and he's going to go back to being lonely so he wants her to stay but so he comes out with this wonderful speech and at no point in that speech does he appear to be like wretched or or desperate he's still standing above her looking down and being brilliant and confident and majestic despite the fact he's falling apart inside it's brilliant it's a brilliant scene and yeah <laughs> but sarah throws the incantation in his face and saves her little brother because that's what's important to her she realizes despite the fact that she hated her little brother to begin with and she wanted to be rid of him that's wrong and she actually loves him and wants him back and goes through all of this to get him back but Liesl, no, she's like, oh, wow, he's so gorgeous. He's so sexy. Uh. <sighs> so I get that, like, the um, relationship and the sexiness of this is what is focused upon in the book. Uh, because I guess we all kind of wondered what would have happened had Sarah said yes to the Goblin King and stayed with him. So that's pretty much what we get after this. Um, Liesl gets her sister out of the underground and t tells the Goblin King that she will stay and be his bride instead of Kathy. Okay, so then she becomes the Goblin Queen. And it gets weird. It gets very weird. As if it wasn't weird enough up until this point. So she starts composing and it's all about the music 
from this point on. And I get it, right? The the, the movie was a musical. I get that the, that the author was trying to work music into this in some way. But it gets so overwhelming. It gets so overwhelming to the point that that's all they do. They just play together for hours. And Liesl composes and the Goblin King plays with her. And then they have sex and it gets weirder still, but she gets this wonderful composition out of it about what she went through when they had sex. It's weird. And then he goes into a sulk and disappears off for a long length of time. And in while this is going on, Liesl discovers that throughout history, it's not been the same Goblin King. It's been a succession of different people. And one of them got a girl because there's been a string of girls and all of them have kind of spent their life force in order to bring spring back over the years and the centuries and she finds out that one of these girls actually left alive and the, the then goblin king left with her on a bridge created by their love okay uh the kind of opposite we've got kind of an opposite theme of milton there uh like the bridge to the, the the hell is created by sin and the bridge out of the underground is created by love yeah um so it kind of kind of led to the, the that i thought that would be like the ending oh they're going to actually really genuinely fall in love and get to leave together and live together no that's not what happens uh she manages to drag the goblin king out of his sulk Again, I didn't want to see this character sulking, but whatever. Uh, I didn't really care at, any, at this point anymore. And then he decides that he loves her so much that he can't see her suffering and dying. And so he lets her go. In a wonderful, cliched kind of way. <sighs> the thing that kind of disappointed me was the second half of the book when they go through like the wedding and and when they're living together it could i think it could have been good it could have been good it could have kind of been an interesting relation an interesting journey that these two characters had together only it was so just the music part of it was so overwhelming like that's all it is and it just eclipses all of their relationship. And there is so much of it. It's just pages and pages and pages about the bloody music. And not about them. To the point where you kind of forget that these are two human beings that are having a relationship. And it becomes all about Liesl and her composing. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, I was insanely disappointed. Um... And the, I mean, again, the terrible thing is while Liesl's away, she gets a kind of glimpse of the real world of her little brother who's upset because she's not there. I don't, I don't get that. I don't get what the, all the stuff about her little brother was about either. Like, I don't know. But anyway, Kathy actually comes to there's this place in the forest called the Goblin Grove, which is kind of the intersection of the two worlds. And she leaves like gifts for Liesl and letters and then Liesl finds out that she can draw because she knew nothing about her sister uh because she's such oh I hate I hate her I hate Liesl so much and Kathy's there in the grove leaving her drawings and gifts and stuff and just being a, a genuinely good sister despite the fact she's how she's been treated by Liesl uh I I love I Kathy I love you Liesl you're a bitch so uh and she finds out stuff about Joseph as well about her little brother which again you're like how did you not know this how you're his sister you're supposed to look after him and to be oh I'm always there for my siblings and my family how did you not know these things um so yeah just reinforcing the fact that Liesl is a really unlikable person and honestly i don't see what the goblin king sees in her like he's just so in love with her and obsessed with her why she's boring and bland and just she's just so full of self-pity it hurts but yeah uh i was disappointed is the <laughs> the, the the moral of the story here the conclusion to all of this uh, I nearly didn't finish this book, but I did. Uh, I ended up reading the second the second half all in one go and just being really confused and bewildered. So all in all, 
I was confused, as I said, I don't understand why the Goblin King had to abduct Kathy to get Liesel to come to the underground. It doesn't really make sense to me. Why didn't he just go, why didn't he just abduct Liesel? Instead of, like, abducting Kathy and then getting Liesel to come and save her and blah, 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 and going through all this fuss just to get Liesel there to marry him. Like, the whole first part of the book. I don't know, it didn't really make sense to me. The second part kind of made sense without the music. I don't know. Um, I didn't really know what to think of it. I didn't understand it. I didn't see what the message of this was supposed to be. So yeah, I was really disappointed. Hmm. So that was it, really. That was my experience of Winter Song. Um, yeah. I hope you got some kind of entertainment out of this, that you enjoyed this ranty video, and I hope to see you all soon. Do like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.